attention only. It's like us too. That's how we just out, just be seen. Mm -hmm. And that's when you. Well, look, get I try to be a, a resource. Yes. 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 I think you want to get involved in the community. You want to get involved in the board. You want to learn about Linda. Right. You want to do this. You want to do that. And um, right. you know, to offer value yeah. to people because I want to see those agents walk across stage, win awards, and be like, you know what? Even if they don't use me as a lender. I think it was a small part of that. You yeah. know, so yeah, that is um, I, I'll run out, to, I'm run out to my car because um, I've got my business card holding <laughs> there. I know it's in my house. Why are you there? Yeah. Why are you there? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Is it Christine? You need to fix your tag. Oh, you love me. Get a bug. I do love you. You're good. <laughs> Yeah, we missed our busy We're not used to everything being so much earlier. We're just yes. like habits. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, by the beginning of summer, we did the out picking blueberries, but we're going to grow blueberries. So, we're looking for. Oh, that's a garden. Cool. So, Ready whenever you want. Oh, so, you can make that a smaller piece. Oh, like bushes. starters. Yeah. Five mm -hmm. bushes. So, we're acclimating. Wow. We're going to be more aesthetic. Um, so, we're checking out their set. Those showing if there's anybody that's actually just hate to water. Okay. Mm -hmm. we're using, oh, and look, they use pine needles. Whatever makes them successful. Yeah, we're like, okay, that's what they do. Yeah, what's on the TVs is what I don't think I'd want to do a UK farm. We've always talked about it, but I think the berries are okay, right? You need the clipper. I think it works for it the other day. Do a point at this? Now, is this a presentation that Keller Williams Corporate created, or did you create this? So it's Keller Williams International okay. that created this. Do I need to turn it off? It might, you might need to turn it off. Oh, yeah, it says say off. Mm -hmm. Like, hold on. Technology is not going to win. Okay, got it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, Keller Williams International. So KW, like Mark King has come out and he said multiple times that like the goal of Keller Williams is to be the, mo the number one most inclusive company in the world. And so like they're adamantly trying to push things like we have DEI division of equity and inclusion. Um, but like, which interesting is like, so do places like Chick-fil-A now. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's a, it's not new, but it's two years ago. They implemented that. Yeah. I think uh, InBev has that too now. <laughs> you know I think InBev has that now too. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of places do. I think yeah. they've, uh, they've like, after the whole Bud Light thing, they're like, we need to rethink some things. <laughs> well, you know, cause Bud Light, that was a flop for both our community and for everybody. You know, that, that was, was it. It didn't yeah. have to be, but it was absolutely yeah. just negative, negative upon negative. It was negative upon negative. And then, you know, you've got big name country singers out there that are, you know, get tossed a Bud Light on stage and they slam it down yeah. and make fun of it. Yeah. And so it became funny again to make fun of the LGBTQ community. Right. And so as just as recently as a couple months ago, right, you know, and so that's why this was already in the works. This has been in the works for a long time. But um, so all of the training that Keller Williams has. So this is a training I had to go through. I had to go through a, a course to train this class. Right. Being gay doesn't qualify me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you would, right. you would think maybe, but no, there's some oh. other contributing factors to it. Um, so I had to go through a training course to be able to teach this class. Um, okay. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting class and I, I really appreciate the effort, but even the first like, the first like presentation that they came out with, like everyone was like, oh, like we, we had to send it back and say, you can't say those things in this class. Like there are things that we were like, that's not, we're not gonna do that. Hello, hello. I love your shirt. Thank you. Oh, cute shirt. Are you here for Proud to be KW? No, um, Maria was doing. Uh, You're upstairs. Upstairs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. So this has been. So I'm a part of the Keller Williams Rainbow Network. I'll give you just a little bit of a history. Hello, love. I love you so much. Yeah. I brought <laughs> snacks. Feel free. I brought snacks. They're up oh, there. I got a piece of chess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My um. Sorry. <laughs> My. Uh, so, okay, so I've tried, to, people have tried to recruit me to other brokerages, which is really, really interesting, and I'm, I am not, like, I am not, like, someone that, like, will devout myself to any business or corporation, period. If it makes sense, it makes sense, and it's a good place for my family, right, yeah. um, for myself and for my family. Now, Keller Williams is going to be really, really, really hard to beat, because 
I have this rainbow network family. So when I, we have um, family reunion in mega camp, I leave two days early and I arrive wherever we're meeting two days early because we have something called rainbow camp or family rainbow family reunion um, where we spend two additional days in training and we focus on things that are affecting our community. Um, and then we also have the LGBT housing initiative, which is what I'm wearing here, where it's, um, we have, so it's like the Homes for Heroes program, except a little bit more fabulous is what I call it. So it's a little bit more sparkle and glitter. So 25% of my commission goes to the housing initiative, 20% of that 25% goes back to the client in the form of a check ten, within 10 days of closing the home. So they get money to use me and also they get to feel good because that remaining 5% will stay with the housing initiative and that gets donated to other nonprofits across the country to help house homeless youth that are kicked out of their homes for being gay. So we have a lot of that. Yes, ma'am. So the, and I know we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. but I still don't, like, how do you delegate who gets to, how of your clients mm -hmm. get to use this? Like, how is that assigned? So it's supposed to be for those in the queer community, the LGBTQ, legitimate, equal, whatever you want to call it, community. Um, the LGBTQIA, uh, and we'll, trust me, we'll go into all of those letters, the alphabet soup, it's coming up, trust me. Um, but we get to decide individually. So if I have someone that's in the community, and it's, so it's designed to help bridge the gap between home ownership and that, that, Unequity that we find in LGBTQIA as opposed to just the regular cisgender community, because um, there's a gap. But the, yeah, and the gap is closing because it used to be significantly. When I first started, there was information coming out that it was over 13 percent, and that was that was drastic. But what people don't what so there have been legislation, and this is me speculating, but you have a lot of um, individual business owners. Uh, that are out there that are within the community. And the reason is because if we own our own business, you can't fire us. So you know, there's no protections here in Springfield. I was going to ask if there were state protections. There's nothing. There's nothing here. It's federally recognized, um, but there's different state to state things. So like it's, a, it's not illegal to discriminate against someone for being in the community. Um, here in Springfield. We actually did have that protection at one point in time. And then it was repealed and it was a really interesting fight because I remember being a part of it, it was called Soji um, back nine, 10 years ago here in Springfield. Um, and I just remember thinking there's no way that this would get repealed. There's no way, right? And then it happened and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> is it's okay to discriminate against someone like me? Um, you know, and at that point in time, I was a, I believe I was a, I was a deputy with Green County and a lot of people, with even family members. I'm from California originally. And so my family thinks I'm wild for living out in the Bible Belt. But mm -hmm. I mean, everyone in California is just the same as me. I can't make change there. Change has already happened there. I can make change here. Um, my wife, on the other hand, is like, yeah, but what about our kids? So, um, and then one final story, and then I'll get to the presentation. But that's why I spoke in front of the city council the other day, mm -hmm. is because we had another thing that they were just saying. All they were saying was that they're voting on something to show that they will not allow or tolerate discrimination within the city, the city of Springfield. And people showed up adamantly against it. And so one of the councilmen, um, I believe it was Hosmer, he asked the gentleman that was speaking, he was like, so you, just so you, to be clear, you want there to be discrimination. Is that what you're trying to say? And the guy was just dodging, dodging, dodging but it turned his whole argument upside down. So it still happens and it's gonna to continue to happen, but it's getting better, which is really nice to see. I'm really, I'm hopeful. I think we've got, um, I think we've got a really good area. I particularly love Springfield. We have a lot of universities and we have a lot of people in industry. We have a lot of opportunity here in particularly, but if you have a city, like when Soji happened, do you think Amazon would have been in favor of moving their company to this area in the Ozarks? back then no the dust is settled you know and everything's kind of getting better and better but you have places you have employees that work at chase and they won't they refuse to come and work in springfield 
So you have people that will give up the idea of a promotion because that forces them to have to move and relocate to the city of Springfield and they won't do it. Why? Because there's not protections. Mm -hmm. So my son won't move here. He's not gay, but um, like I said, we're advocates mm -hmm. and he, he said, I don't understand why you did that. I said, yeah, I thought <laughs> I was really conservative until I got here and maybe I'm not. <laughs> Where are you from? Seattle. Seattle? Oh yeah, yeah that's right. That's right, yeah. Seattle. Yeah. No, you're probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was, but I think I think all that moved a little bit on us too. So yeah. I don't know anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so the I'm gonna I've got some instructions here that I want to read because they were Keller Williams worked really hard on putting this together and I really appreciate all the effort that they did. Um, but I'm really grateful to see the senators here, you know, um, because you're not a part of like what we, you know, I feel like I live in a bubble sometimes, and I live in this very fabulous rainbow bubble where everybody in my world is good and everybody in my world is you know, accepting and open. And then um, to have people that don't work in my office particularly show up means a lot. So I mean, so anyway. I'm glad you're doing it. I'm sorry there aren't many people here. No, it's okay. We I think the reschedule. I think it's the it's the reschedule. So I had to oh, go. So another short story. She tried to die on us. Right? I did. I tried to die. I was in the hospital. I, I was in the ER when I was trying, when I was supposed to be teaching this class. So um, I have a bad gallbladder that's, you know, just waiting. I served it the eviction notice. We're just waiting to have it out now. So anyway, but we're good today. Good. <laughs> so, all right, we're going to acknowledge a lot of history and things as to why this is, uh, why we're here in the first place, why June is considered um, LGBTQ plus pride month. Um, and some of the reasons it even came about um, and just kind of some some cool little things that I think are that I think a lot of people don't actually realize about um, the community things like why we celebrate pride who is in the rainbow how does this apply to real estate and what is Keller Williams doing so we want to make sure that we're I'm trying to articulate things about this one thing that I want to make it very clear is that I want questions if you there, I am the, I trust me, I was a cop. There is not a thing that anybody could ever say that will offend me. <laughs> I have been there. So if you ever have any questions about anything, including some of the colors, please bring it up. Um, so Stonewall. Um, in June of 1969, Stonewall, which is a bar um, in Greenwich Village was raided by the police. The patrons of the bar decided to fight back at this point in time. So this had been a thing that had been happening for years in Canada and the United States, where it's it was it's actually illegal to have and to participate in homosexual conduct. So you would be jailed, you would be arrested, and people would be outed. So there was a lot of people, especially back then, that were not out, and they may have had a facade. There was a lot of people, like men, would be in a relationship with a woman. And that woman would also be in a relationship with a woman or that man would be in a relationship with a man. That's how they hid. That's how they would hide. A lot of people, if you had a same sex um, individuals that were living in the same place, they would call each other siblings. And they weren't, they weren't always siblings. Obviously there were some, but not all. Um, but the participants in this historic event, including trans and lesbian protesters, and many of the protesters were people of color. Um, this became a turning point in the fight for LGBTQ rights. The Stonewall riots were followed by several days of demonstration in New York and was the impetus for the formation of the Gay Liberation Front, as well as other gay, lesbian, bisexual, civil rights organizations. One thing that we will find that is oftentimes left out, especially in our history, is trans. And that has been, that has caused the current climate and problem that we're having now. They've always been there. In fact, the person that threw the first stone or the first brick was a trans woman of color. And she's the one that started the whole thing, this whole Stonewall riot. Um, it was a trans woman of color. And when she threw the first brick, that's when the fight broke out. And that's when the police were like, oh, <laughs> we can't just take whatever they were calling, you know, my community at the time to jail. Now they have a fight. And it turned into several, several days. So the next year in 1970, the uprising was commemorated for the first annual Christopher Street Day Parade. Christopher Street is the street in which Stonewall, the bar, is on. So that's why they called it that, um, which eventually turned into Pride. So in the years since 1970, Pride has, commemorate, has been commemorated 
across the world with this spread. Some places celebrate in June while others celebrate pride at different times of the year. For example, Springfield, we just recently had our pride, which was the best pride that we have had to date. We did have protesters. These ones were a little bit more intimidating than normal. They were the proud, the proud boys. So we had a chapter of the Proud Boys show up in a van, um, but what they didn't expect was our peacekeepers. Pride had a group of volunteers that were actually from local churches prim primarily with noisemakers and shakers and a couple of speakers. And they surrounded the Proud Boys. These, these gentlemen were armed and our, our <laughs> peacekeepers showed up and surrounded them with a bunch of noisemakers and drowned out all of their sound. It was amazing. The cops didn't have to get involved. They were standing right there, but they didn't have to do anything or get involved. It was amazing. So, but we also have had pride in October. So we do that because we don't want to step on the toes of Juneteenth, which has happened in the past where we've scheduled pride on the same weekend as Juneteenth. And that was distasteful. So we separated it a little bit, but now we're back in June. And I think that's for the best, especially for our area. So um, we share... Pride is celebrated in every community, um, or not in every community, but some people are celebrated a little bit smaller. Sometimes it's a little bit larger. Joplin has a two-day Pride event, and that is a lot of pride. That is a lot of pride. Two days of being in a booth. I couldn't do it, but they, I mean, but they've had a lot of success with it. They actually have a very high population of people in my community, so it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so there's some other days that we celebrate, including International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. That's May 17th. Um, June is Pride Month whenever we, we celebrate June because a lot of times that's, that's when Stonewall happens. So that's historically when it will be. Um, there's National Coming Out Day, and that's October 11th, and International Trans Day of Visibility, March 31st. So these are some of the dates and the times. This is an interesting timeline. Um, most of the time when I ask, there's only one, maybe two names on here that are recognizable. And that's Matthew Shepard and then the term don't ask, don't tell. So um, I will say that I have experience with don't ask, don't tell because I was actually in the army when don't ask, don't tell was in full force. So I remember when it was repealed and I remember being scared for my fellow LGBTQ people because the world may have been ready for it and the United States may have been ready for it, but the US military was so far behind because it was it was okay to be homophobic basically. So the purpose of Don't Ask, Don't Tell was actually to protect people. And they couldn't just, if as long as you weren't out and you weren't caught, that you couldn't be kicked out. But if you were caught, they actually made it worse because then you could get um, dishonorably discharged. So it was pretty, it was difficult for a lot of people. So the Defense Against Marriage Act, 1996, the Defense of Marriage Act authorized states that ban same-sex marriage to refuse to recognize same-sex marriages that were performed in other states and further specified that the U.S. federal government define marriage only between a man and a woman. In 2003, Lawrence versus Texas invalidated sodomy law across the United States, which then decriminalized homosexuality in every state and every United States territory. Who has the right to arrest somebody for an activity that they do in their own home? So it was, it's a topic of conversation that a lot of people don't want to talk about because what you're talking about is what people do in the bedroom. But, for the, but keep in mind, that shouldn't have been anyone's business in the first place. So um, in 2009, the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Act was signed into law as response to the murders of Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Both happened in 1998. And the measure expands the 1969 United States federal hate crimes law to include crimes motivated by a victim's actual or perceived gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, or disability. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed in 2011. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was United States policy that precluded LGBTQ plus individuals from serving openly in any branch under the military. Under this policy, service members who came out or were outed were subject to discharge. And in this, it just says discharge, but it is dishonorable discharge. So while I was in the military, just my personal experience, um, and part of this, I will say, I'm like, I don't know what I was trying to prove but I had, uh, I was a mechanic 
And I was like, I mean, I guess I was trying to prove something, but being a mechanic, I looked very gay. <laughs> and so my unit administrator came in for an oil change and I remember thinking, oh shit. And then right after that, my life in the military um, became very short. So, and I was actually released from the military. They tried to investigate me for Don't Ask, Don't Tell, but they didn't have any actual reasoning why. And so they set up a time that I was supposed to leave to go to training and I was never given notice. And because I was never giving notice, I didn't show up. And then they released me from the military. So it was a really good, tricky way of having people removed from the military. Fun fact, Fort Leonard Wood, which should be probably familiar for all of us, um, was the number two um, fort in the United States for Don't Ask, Don't Tell discharges. And we were based, uh, we did most of our activity and most of our intel and most of our um, service leaders were from Fort Leonard Wood. Only um, underneath Fort Drum, New York. So, fun times. So obviously I don't have any um, issues with it now, but I don't qualify for any VA benefits, though I have been through military training. I've been through basic training. I've served in my unit for a couple of years, but I have access to nothing. So no benefits. Um, okay, now Ubgerfell and Hodges was a landmark case in which the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that state bans on marriage equality are actually unconstitutional and instituted nationwide marriage equality. That happened in 2015, and I remember where I was standing. You know, when there's something so big in your life that happens that you're like, I remember where I was when on the, the um, planes hit the World Trade Center. Most of us do. Same thing happened for me when I found out that I could actually legally get married one day. Because um, in my mind, that was just never going to be a possibility. I just assumed that's just not on the table, that the cards were never going to be dealt for me. So that was a big deal. My twin, I have an identical twin who's also in the community. Their pronouns were they done. And that was, uh, that was a big deal for us that day. So lots of happy tears. And then they went off and got married very quickly. And I was, I was like, well, wait, 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 wait. Just because we can doesn't mean we should. I'm so. just still think about this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hold up. But anyway, finally, the 2020 U.S. Supreme Court block, uh, ruling in Bostock versus Clayton County, Georgia, extended protections against employment discrimination to include sexual orientation and gender identity, making it illegal for employers to discriminate against LGBTQ plus employees. Do you guys have any... Any thoughts or any questions about any of this? These are all federal. These are all federal. Mm -hmm. States, like including Missouri, we're not gonna have much happy things to report. <laughs> um, most things change at the federal level and then are extended to here. Are you looking for Maria's training? Yeah. It's upstairs. <gasps> I know, they double booked this. <laughs> so this is, um, I remember when I when they started talking about this particular map, and I as soon as I saw it, I knew exactly what it was, and I was like, "Well, that's fun." So, all right. So I think I can do this little doohickey. Maybe not on that. So any of the stuff in blue, especially dark blue, that there are constitutional protections against discrimination based on sexual orientation, and over here, there is the death penalty. So there are countries that are in the dark maroon that if we were to visit and we were to get caught, even though we're US citizens, there it's less likely, but if I were in a smaller area, populated area in Saudi Arabia or any of these, especially obviously Afghanistan or Iran, Pakistan, um, Somalia, Nigeria, um, I could receive the death, death penalty. So I won't be traveling <laughs> to those locations. Um, another place that kind of catches people off guard, and it's not necessarily, they're not, it's not the death penalty, but I know a lot of people in my life that have talked to me about like different really awesome vacations and cruises and all inclusive places that I can go. It's beautiful, the white sandy beaches like Jamaica. I can't go and I don't want to go because I could be put into prison for life just by going to Jamaica. When I was in basic training, I was in basic training with a woman that was from Jamaica originally. And she would, she would sing this song and it was really catchy. And I was like, cool, what, is, what does all that mean? And it was like, it said, boom, bye, bye, and a Bati boy head. And that was the actual like words of the song. And I'm walking down the hall singing it. Like, what does that mean? And she's like, 
Um, and she was like, you know what, you know what that means. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And she was like, Bati boy is a fag. And that's how she described it. And I was like, boom, bye, bye, and about head, got it. So shooting them in the head. And that is just like a nursery rhyme to her. That's how the topic of conversation. So when people say, I went to Jamaica, and I was like, that it was gorgeous. <laughs> I'll enjoy your pictures, but I won't enjoy going there. So does that, I mean, is that surprising to anybody? Has anybody been to Jamaica? It's dumb. You're not missing out. It's good. I thought it would be. <laughs> I was hoping. I've never been there. Well, never been there. so and I, you, we can go. We we just have we have to remain on the resorts, you know. But even still, we're not protected from the resorts, you know. Um, that's why there's things called like Olivia Cruise Line, which is a cruise line that's focused on just LGBTQ, mainly for lesbian and for women. Um, it's a cruise liner, and sometimes they actually rent out full resorts for weeks at a time, and the Olivia um company will take over they won't do it in certain places obviously so that place obviously being one of them but so this is what kelly williams says kelly williams is a worldwide company so it's important to think about the global perspective and how much variability there is in the lgbtq world rights or rights worldwide areas that are darker in marine color is where it's um, punishable by death the darker the blue the more protected it is but if you notice the darker the blue we don't really have that in places like the United States. Canada is a lot better, so is Brazil. There's uh, some, I really, I actually have like gone through and I'm like, so where am I vacationing? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm going to Ecuador, Bolivia. I'm not gonna be, you know, but there's, you know, the, then there's the islands, there's islands here too, but some of these islands that, you know, a lot of people really enjoy going to, um, Barbados. What's that one? This maybe. Um, what's the Are one? Are you here for Proud to be KW or Maria? Yeah, yeah, awesome. Thank you for coming. No, it's okay. Which one is what? Take pictures. Um, in Brazil, like up in the North Park. Yeah. What is that? Huh. It's right next to Venezuela, but you're really huh. testing my. I can't tell. Let me see if I can tell right here. Uh -huh. Maybe. It's called the map of South, South America. It's kind of. I'll have to look at it. I'll find out. Yeah. Okay. Um. But any takeaways from that and how like different like. When people talk to me about like traveling and things like that, I'm like, well, we'll probably stay stateside. I'm certainly not going to Canada because that's cold. Um, Mexico is actually better, oddly enough, with some of their protections and things like that, which, which takes people by surprise. Crazy. Yeah, I, that was my biggest thing mm -hmm. with that is I was like, Shit. Right. and I like follow a lot on TikTok of like right. people that are queer and like where they travel and where it's safe mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, you know, as much as as much as I'm an ally, which you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's just like never registered to me. Like mm -hmm. about like where I, I think about my safety about visiting places. Um, because if I have enough to drink, I wander. Uh, <laughs> which right. we discussed before. Right. And so right. it's like one of those like I worry about that for uh -huh. me. Like yeah. where is it going to be okay if I? But yeah, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. Yeah. It might be Bolivia. Bolivia. Yeah, Bolivia is further down, and they're actually dark blue. Mm -hmm. um, Cuba has some has more protections than the United States, wow. which I was just like, that's. And then of course the stuff that's the you know the beige, the tan. They don't really have anything one way or another. It's just pretty, just down the road, down the middle. But I will say. Um, Russia is even though it's shaded here in beige, um, that's definitely not a, that's I'm surprised it's only beige and not um worse. That could be legal policy, but there might be some cultural cultural differences are very stark. And then I've and I've seen some some here. Um, you know, I had a I've had different families from different cultures. That's something else. When I do an open house and I know that people are coming in and they're speaking a different language. I definitely want to try and understand what language they're speaking because that might determine whether or not I'm going to pursue helping them or if I'm just going to let them wander the open house. So, okay. Well, here is our alphabet soup. This is actually one of the slides that we had to send back to KW International because we were like, there were some terms in there that are, that were very outdated 
and like transsexual. Um, there, it is a part of the history, but it is not a part of the language that we encourage. And this is about learning and encouraging people to use the right, to help people understand where people are, and then to use right pronouns and things uh, such as that. So I'm just gonna read through them. You used, okay, so the LGBTQ plus community, you used, you, you put it together as a word. What did you call it? Legitimate aqua. Legit, Le, legit, quoi. Yeah. legit, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a you thing. Is that yeah, just, just a, a yeah? That was right. a TikTok thing, that's, but it's, it's a lot easier. I know, I get right? Of, I get that's why I was like, I someone <laughs> sent me a TikTok that was like, you know, the what do you call it, the legit quoi community, and I'm like, I want to be called that. <laughs> that is amazing. I was like, who came up with that, and why did it take us decades? We are <laughs> like, yeah. we are better than that. <laughs> so, um, no, that's more just a funny little pun. So I know, sorry. So um, a lot of these you guys will know, but then a little bit further down the line, I'll make sure to explain. So lesbian, a woman who is primarily attracted to women, gay, a man who is primarily attracted to men, sometimes a broad term for individuals primarily attracted to the same sex. So a lot of times people will say the gay community, the gay community, and that just means all of us. So Bisexual, an individual attracted to people of their own and opposite genders. Transgender, a person who whose gender identifies, who I sorry, person whose gender identity dif differs from their assigned sex at birth. And that is pretty crucial for um, people to, to know is that it's assigned sex at birth. And then we'll get into uh, some, some more of that when we get to intersex. Um, Queer, an umbrella term to be more inclusive of many identities and variations that make up the LGBTQ plus community. Um, that's not a slur necessarily, but I caution people who are probably not in our community from saying that because it could be taken by people. Someone, If someone were to say, well, in the queer community, it's come back pretty hard. And I don't think that it will continue to be seen as a slur. But I would just advise, unless you know the crowd you're speaking to, I would probably caution you from saying that. Um, questioning, oh, sorry, and um, yeah, questioning the process of exploring and discovering one's, one's own sexual orientation, gender identity, and or gender expression. Intersex an individual whose sexual anatomy or chromosomes do not fit with the traditional markers of female and male. Um, sometimes people are born at, with both, sometimes, and then as they are very, very, very young children, a lot of times parents will have to make a decision for the child. And sometimes they don't always get it right. So, you know, if there was a, if there was a surgery that took place and the parents were doing their best, I mean, it's not, but at times people won't have the surgery, will choose to actually not have the surgery at all. Um, and then as the child becomes an adult, they can decide what to do at that point. My husband's cousin. Oh, really? Uh -huh. yeah. Dennis. Yeah. Uh, they raised him as Dennis until he uh, got into eighth grade, mm -hmm. got a period, and then Denise. Mm -hmm. So um, it was in Philadelphia in the 70s, and actually uh, they didn't move neighborhoods. Really? Everybody in the neighborhood just accepted it that's and wonderful. just didn't, didn't care about it. But yeah, yeah that's, so, cool. that's really cool. That's a cool story. Mm -hmm. Um, ally, typically a non-queer person who supports and advocates for the queer community on an individual um, or an individual within the LGBTQ plus community can be an ally for members that identify differently than them. So I would assume everybody in here is an ally. Um, asexual, an individual who generally does not feel sexual desire or attraction to any group of people. It is not the same as celibacy as and has many subgroups. So that is, I actually don't have a lot of experience or um, education for that. So I can't really expand more though I have reached out um, to some people to try and expand on that to help educate if there, if there are more questions that come up for that. Pansexual, a person who experiences sexual, romantic, physical and or spiritual attraction to members of all gender identities, expressions, not just people who fit into the standard gender binary. So some people, um, and I've met people who they're, they're married to or they are attracted to someone of the same sex and then that person that they are, um, that they're in a relationship with actually transitions. Um, and sometimes that's caused issues because they're not attracted to that. Um, and then some people, they love the person and they are with them through transition. 
Um, and that's a very, it's also, a, you can expand on that topic of conversation for a long time. But does anyone have any questions in particular about the verbiage and what that is? Um, my, so the preference is rather than using queer, to use gay? So I would say so, the entire community. Yeah, if you were to entirety. use one of two, I would I would recommend gay personally, especially in, in this area. Hey, hey. Um, in this area in particular, I would encourage that because I say the queer community to people who are not in the community and don't have a lot of experience in it. And they usually are like, oh my God. And I'm like, they think I'm funny and I am funny. I'm very funny, but in those moments, I'm just like not trying to have the shock factor or the wow factor, but it does still come across as like, oh, I didn't know you could say that. And I'm like, I'm hearing both, mm -hmm. like in national news, we're hearing queer. I'm hearing mm -hmm. queer more often than gay. I'm yeah. just kind of curious. Because gay is supposed to just describe one aspect of the community while queer is it over like the umbrella term. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, and that's a great question too. So, but if someone, you know, if there's ever any questions, because so I will say something that I want to make clear is that there's been a lot of, and I do call this propaganda uh, against the gay community, and it usually comes from very, very conservative right wing sources where they're pointing out the different colors of our flags and saying, well, this color actually represents this. And um, the most recent thing, and this actually is from back 20 years ago, it's just recently made it a big old uprising is MAP, minor attracted person. And that is not a thing in our community. Their minor attracted person propaganda is from white right, what right wing conservatives that are trying to just like demoralize and criminalize and make our community look bad. It happens every June, every June now, it's coming up more and more, but that is not a thing, that's a crime, and everybody in my community would also tell you. Are you talking about pedophilia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, minor attractive person. That's not a real thing. And then they put this, I've seen a ton of it on social media where they're just like, I don't support, it's on Facebook pages here locally. There's a ton of people that have been talking about like, so in all of the pride stuff that happened locally, um, people would bring that up. And they would say, this flag represents and supports minor attractive people. And I'm like, well, that's not true. But if you go, you can't convince them otherwise. So it just, I just let those people ride. I'm like, you can live in your ignorance because that's not real. So especially by being a cop, if there is a minor, if there is a minor attractive person, please let me know. Because I would like to assist them to the ground and make sure that they go to jail. <laughs> so there's any questions about that one yet? Uh, okay, so this, I don't know who came up with this, but this, this is cute and also a little bit, I need to explain it. So the gingerbread person is a helpful way to distinguish between sex, gender, gender identity, gender expression, and sexuality. Gender identity is how a person defines their gender. For example, a man, woman, queer, or non-binary. For us, that often means using the pronouns that align with who they are. Hold on, where'd you go? Gender expression is how we perform our gender. Unlike gender identity, this can vary from day to day. For example, a person might wear a dress and heels one day to, perf to perform a more feminine gender expression, and then go to the gym in basketball shorts and sneakers and perform more masculine. Anatomical sex is our, biological, bi is our biology and anatomy. The importance here is that gender identity and expression are not equivalent to sexual or romantic attractions. Someone can be trans and heterosexual or non-binary and asexual or cisgendered and pansexual and every other possible combination in between. Always assume people know themselves better than you do, so this would be a good time to ask questions. A really good question to ask people is, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Can you tell me your pronouns? And I've had people ask me that, and the first time someone asked me that, I was just like, she, her, duh. But then I'm this was years ago before it was popular and now i'm like oh she her so but my so i identify as female she her or my pronouns um my gender expression is much more on the masculine side so if i were to have long curly hair which if i let my hair grow out it would be a curly goodness i don't know how to handle that and i don't want to learn how to handle that because that's just not how i express myself i don't feel i wouldn't feel comfortable doing that um, and I do remember the days that I was um, 
uh, I did have some really, I assumed that they were gorgeous dresses when I was a young girl. Um, and I hated them, hated them. My twin hated them a lot worse. <laughs> so I was the quiet, sweet, gentle twin. And my, my, my other twin was the one that would like tear the dress off and go play in the dirt. So both very, very much in the queer community. They just assumed they were like, that twin is gay. And then I came out and they were like, well, I guess that tracks too. But, um, <laughs> but that's my, so that's kind of how I relate to how I can best explain this, who you're attracted to. So your identity, the, that's what they're trying to describe here on the top with your brain, the nice pretty little mm -hmm. rainbow brain, who you're attracted to, and then the full body on the expression, and then obviously what your sex is. So this can vary for people. You know, there are people that I've, I saw, we were, I was at a wedding last weekend and there were people, there is a woman that usually has a much more masculine gender expression. And at this wedding, she was wearing a gorgeous dress and she pulled it off way better than I could. But I was just, it took me by surprise, but then that's, but everyone's gender expression can change. So um, do you have any questions about this? This is usually an interesting one that I crossed the board when I was watching another um, person, another instructor teach this class via Zoom. Um, this brought up the most questions in the class because people were, they were genuinely curious about how people express themselves. The instructor was a, um, he identifies as a male and he was born, his, um, his gender or his sex assignment at birth was male um, and he goes by he, him, but he's very, very feminine. So a lot of his, when he's speaking, he um, and his mannerisms, they come across very, very feminine. And he made that room feel so comfortable asking questions, but it was a packed room. I mean, the room had probably 40 people in it. So it was a really good class where people, um, and he, he just put everybody at ease, which is a really beautiful thing because sometimes people are so scared to offend that they won't ask a question, even when it's appropriate to ask. So... Okay, LGBTQ in the United States, Americans who self-identify as LGBTQ in 2021 by generation, Gen Z, millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, and then your traditionalists. Does this surprise anybody? So I would say that this right here, um, actually it was more, it's more this, people who were born here and raised here, um, I do think that this impact is really interesting because there's, does anyone know what happened during those times when those two generations would have been growing up? It wasn't discussed. Mm -hmm. Not that. AIDS? Yep. Oh, AIDS. Mm -hmm. That's the AIDS epidemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there are thousands upon thousands of people who died and they were primarily in the LGBTQ community. Um, majority of all of the deaths were gay men. So it, AIDS started as GRID. Um, I forget the acronym for GRID, but it was GRID in San Francisco. And they actually called it GRID because they were making a GRID where the sex, the hotspots were happening for when the AIDS coming out. Um, there was a lot of failure on the federal government based on when the AIDS epidemic happened. Um, Reagan was president and there was just a blind eye that was turned because they didn't really care that it was gay men that were dying. If it were the cisgender community, it probably would have been handled a whole lot differently. But because it was the gay community, there was not a lot of help that was being taken then. People were afraid to touch people. Um, they were afraid to be in the same room. A lot of these men died in isolation, pure isolation. So it's a big tragedy. But um, So another way to look at this that I've been describing is um, there's a there's a chart out there showing how many left-handed people we had in the 1920s, 1930s, 40s, 50s, and now. But back in the 1920s, you would be beat, and you would have to train yourself to be a right-handed person because it was looked it was looked down upon. You were different. Being different back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s was just not an option. So you would have to learn to be right-handed. Well, that became known as being silly and just why so that started changing and so now suddenly you have all of these left people left-handed people it's, it's, i don't know where did all these people come from all these left-handers so when the topic of conversation comes up which i have heard this time and time again why is everybody in this new generation why are they all gay they're not all gay 
but they have always been there. They just are not out. So, but then you have people that are coming out in their 50s and 60s and they have a family. Now they're getting divorced from, you know, and it's really, it's been really hard. There's some families out there that, you know, the gay topic tears families apart at times. Well, you've had someone who's been in hiding for a long time. And so, I mean, those are just, that's actually pretty much most of what I've said for this slide is not anything on what I've been told to say. So I'll start doing that. Um, but is, it, is there any ahas or anything um, that you guys find? I just think it's crazy that it doubles. It almost mm -hmm. doubles. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost completely it's safe. Safe. It's safe. Uh -huh. it's yeah, safe. it is. That's exactly right. It feels safe to do that now. Okay, so home ownership. So the biggest discrepancy that we continue to see is actually with our, our um, community of color. So we still see the largest discrepancy there. LGBTQ, those in the community, 49%. Um, African-American, Black, 42%. Hispanic, Latino is 48 White, non-Hispanic, 72 And then the general home ownership rate is 64 So um, these comparisons are imperfect, though, because Freddie Mac doesn't account for intersectionality. Um, the reality, there are LGBTQ homeowners who are also Black, Hispanic, Latino, white, Asian, and indigenous, and multiracial. So those are things to keep in mind. Um, income of buyers and sellers. This I found to be some of, this is probably my coolest slide, if I can, if we're talking about statistics and facts. So the median income and the median age is at the bottom, $93,200 in the LGBTQ community. That is the median income. Um, so we're not trailing that far behind. Um, Non-LGBTQ is 97, and then trailing for just in the LG, LG is 96.5. So what that tells me is there's a lot of gay money out there. It tells me there's a lot of gay money in our more liberal cities, is mm -hmm. what it tells me when I'm looking and, and parsing those numbers. You know, if you look at the median income in, let's say, Seattle or San Francisco or mm -hmm. New York, it's going to be very different than the median income here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's part of it, too. But there is a lot of money in the community because mm -hmm. because the community supports each other in the community. Yeah. Well, we have. So Christina is with me. I'm the vice president of Springfield Black Tie, and we're the largest LGBTQ plus fundraiser in Southwest Missouri. But also, I think, honestly, outside of anything that's HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, I think we're actually the largest in the Midwest. So we have about 950 attendees. Last year, we raised $215,000 in one night. Nice. Um, and this year is our 20th anniversary, just, you know, shameless plug. But I mean, she knows all about it because like that's, but we use each other. This, it's literally the gay yellow pages. That's, so if you want to be seen in, in our community, one of the best places is where do you go? Where do you put your business or your company to make sure that, that our community sees you? But our community doesn't just see you. We need to see your action. That's why when we see you in a place like Black Tie, we also see your support. Because it's not cheap to get a ticket. It's two hundred dollars a ticket, and then it's. I mean, our advertising costs just went up, and we'll sell out this year. Even though we raised our prices, we'll sell out. I mean, we always have a wait list. So everybody that's in our black tie advertising book, Keller Williams, they're in our advertising book, and they have been for years. And they're a huge. This and I'm talking about not KWRI. I'm talking about KW Springfield. So that's why. So I get to come to work every day and feel really good about where I work. So. So this one, I do need to speed up because I got a good class coming right after me. So housing non-discrimination laws, the um, states in dark green have state laws explicitly prohibiting housing discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Well, every state has employment protections after the Bostock case we mentioned previously. Many do not provide similar protections for housing. And if you'll notice, where's Missouri? Missouri is sitting smack dab right in the beige, which is sad and unfortunate, but none of the states that are in beige should really come across as shocking. So these, you can discriminate based on housing, and it's happened here in this market center. There's been places that 
there's been agents that I've that have come up to me and they're just like, how do I help my people? Because we just walk through this house and everything in it says Baptist Bible, Baptist Bible, Baptist Bible. I'm afraid that if I put two gentlemen's names on this and I say, make a form an LLC or just put one guy down. And then when you get to closing, correct it. You know, or a couple of days before closing, add them to the contract and just tell them that it's a co-signer that there was something wrong and it's a co-signer. But if they don't do that, they could be. So NAR has discrimination policy protection, but Missouri does not, so. Discrimination in the lending process, that's a thing. So loan approval rates for same-sex couples is three to 8% lower than the heterosexual couples. Same-sex applicants were 73% more likely to be denied a loan than their heterosexual counterparts. Same-sex couples pay more in interest and fees and interest. The difference in finance fees average less than 0.5%, but combined added up as much as $86 million annually. So how can they justify that whenever it's on a... If you have a smaller mortgage um, and smaller mortgage brokers, uh, or sometimes you can... Some of this is probably based on, well, we cut, we gave some, or we cut some fees here for these people, but across the average, that's not happening for people who are in same-sex relationships. Well, I would I agree with that. I think that might be just a little skewed at the fact, like, I would like to see, like, a study of, um, you know, same-sex couples versus heterosexual credit score, because that's mm -hmm. what goes into it the right. most. So that's why I'm like, so this I is a report. It, this report came out, and I was actually a member of Nagler Rep. I'm no longer a member of Nagler Rep anymore. Nagler Rep, really, like they couldn't come up with a better. Anyway, National Association of Gay and Lesbian Real Estate Professionals, Nagler Rep. Um, that report came out in 2020, and I, I remember reading. I actually still have a copy of it, so I might send it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do have actually they have the PDF right here, so I'll send the link. Um, sexual orientation of NAR members, heterosexual, 89, gay, lesbian, 3%, bisexual, 1%, one prefer not to describe and prefer to self-describe, and then 6% say prefer not to say at all. So that, I don't believe that for a second. There's a ton of queers in, our, in, our, in NAR, and the reason, again, being if we're self-employed, you can't fire us. You know, we can be dismissed from a brokerage, but I'll just go find another brokerage to hang my license at. And if a client doesn't want to work with me, I don't want to work with them either. So those are um, some interesting stats. And I think that's going to change. That's based on a 2021 survey. I remember taking that survey. So I'm definitely part of that 3%. But overall, um, I think that that is probably significantly lower than what it actually is. Well, just look at your other chart. Um, a lot of those agents are older agents too, mm -hmm. coming from those previous generations or so younger generations are now entering real estate. And so you'll see right. those numbers change just I, because of that. I do actually, and to go with that, that last slide, I probably should find out the median age of who participated in something like this. There's going to be more um, from data from that in the actual um, survey itself. I'd be curious. I need to look more deeply into that to get that. It'd be interesting. I don't think it's skews. I don't think it'll change the thing, but it'll give you more insight into mm -hmm. those yeah. numbers. So in the gray is LGBTQ+, plus. in the red is heterosexual. Um, the net income of real estate agents selling real estate. Why do you think LGBTQ plus real estate agents oftentimes are making more money? Because we're seeing in this higher area up here, or up here, we're seeing, or yeah, sorry, the gray. So in the gray area at the higher level of um, net proceeds and things like that, where our income is actually higher than our heterosexual counterparts. And that, I, I personally think a lot of it has to do with things like the rainbow network. We plug ourselves in and then agents across the, uh, across the world will send us referrals. I personally have worked several referrals and I, anytime I have a referral that I'm sending out of state, I almost always send them to one of my Rainbow Network partners. We provide each other and we keep our money within our community too. So that was pretty surprising for a lot of people, but. So the Keller Williams Rainbow Network is an independent membership-based association of LGBTQ plus realtors and professionals across the Keller Williams Realty, across Keller Williams International. As the KW um, LGBTQ plus resource, the Rainbow Network takes pride in our community mission and unique culture with a commitment to build diversity worth celebrating. 
As an international network of KW LGBTQ plus associates, staff, and leaders, we are committed to serving our community with integrity, dignity, and passion. Additionally, it's worth noting that the Keller Williams Rainbow Network is a $1 billion referral network. And we track this real close. So when we were realizing how much money was coming through a couple of years ago, one of our agents from upstate New York actually was like, oh, we need to find out who and how much money is going across the world within our Rainbow Network. We have 1,900 Rainbow Network members. And we don't, unfortunately, we don't allow, we don't allow ally agents into, into the network. So you have to be within the LGBTQ+. Plus. Um, and the reason we do that is because we're of our mission. We're trying to keep that in our community. Um, we have another network that we have for allies and things like that. But um, this is the this is one of the reasons why this last slide, in my opinion, is higher um, in the gray area. So, any takeaways, ahas? Great information. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm reaching out to a couple other market centers, um, and I'm going to be, I didn't fill out this information, so don't do that. Um, but, you know, I'd love feedback from anybody that has any questions or if there's any more clarification you think needs to be done, because I'm going to be teaching this at some additional market centers. Um, and we've had some that have traveled the entire hunter has traveled almost the entire East Coast teaching us up and down this entire Pride Month. It's been pretty awesome to see. So I was really excited to teach this class. Um, I'm sorry I had to reschedule it, but um, it's really exciting to see how far our community has come, but also how far the real estate industry has helped propel the queer community as well. So anyway, thank you guys for coming. There's snacks over here. Get some snacks. Hi, Lynn Escrow. One of my questions is about titling mm -hmm. and um, you know you kind of I didn't even think about forming an LLC or, or something else um, but what kind of things are you running into or have you run into anything mm -hmm. um, any oh, prejudices mm -hmm. or or issues or I would think names names yeah. could be an issue so so for that I will say I currently have a client that has a dead name that is a legal name but is we call it their dead name when someone is transitioned from their assigned gender at birth to the, um, the gender that they, they actually truly are. Um, like for example, if someone's name is, I'll just use myself as, as an example. I was born with the name Elise, but let's say I want to transition my name to something like Alec, Alex, whatever it would be. Um, I'm not, but you know, that's what another name could have been. And so I go by that and everyone sees me as that. And then if I have fully transitioned and I have facial hair and then I have to say my name is Elise on paper. That's awful. And so I've actually, I've currently got paperwork out and I'm working with an attorney to, hopefully they'll pro bono this, but they will um, pay to help file their name change. That's what I was gonna ask, mm -hmm. is that is it just a straight, simple process? No, it's awful in Missouri. It's really You hard. have to actually go to a publication. You have to publish three weeks in a row that you have intention on changing your name. And then it takes another 30 days after that. So I have a client that I had no idea. They just came to me and then I got their pre-approval letter and their pre-approval letter said a feminine name. And I was like, hey, is this your dead name? And he said, yeah. I said, well, if you would like, if you're okay with stopping the home search, let's change your name. So, and then I found all the resources and sent that to them. And we're in the middle of trying to get the name changed. He's in the, in the meantime, found three or four houses. He's like, I don't want to miss it. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, you're going to have to go down as this. So but we're working through some stuff. Another issue that I have found is actually there was a woman that she's lived in a house for 20 plus years with her wife. Her wife recently passed away. Um, when they said wife, I thought it was a legit wife. But in our community, especially in the older community, because gay marriage was just not a thing, they were like, well, we don't need to actually put it down on paper because we already have the love that a marriage would have. Sure. Well, her wife died. And her wife was the one that was on the title. Mm -hmm. And then the family came in. Mm -hmm. And that house is actually about to be listed by another KW agent. Were they legally married? No. They and because they weren't legally married, married, she was kicked out of the home. The Can family came legally married in Missouri because you get a national, you mean nationally what? recognized marriage. But does Missouri I mean, recognize? Yeah, myself. it would have been recognized, but they weren't legally they married. Weren't legally married. Mm -hmm. They were together they just, for 20 years. They were, yeah. For, yeah. And it's the, 
the, the, the families that she, she was thought everything this. was going to be a okay so we didn't think it was a big deal and then the family turned ugly they put almost two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of work dash equity into the house so this friend of ours totally lost her ass and has nothing she had to move away and she she has nothing she gets nothing from the trust she nothing. had to leave the house and she they took her dog they took her dog they and she had no legal rights to anything yeah. have either of you heard of committed intimate relationships i'm not it's a legal status um, came out of california washington's getting into it but it's where two people live together and cohabitate together uh, a judge can can deem them uh, owners of the property. Oh. Yeah, that's not going to hit Missouri. Yeah, it's not oh, happening here yeah. in Missouri, yeah, but I was just wondering, that. you know, yeah, it would, it would cost a lot of money, I think, to fight something like that. Yeah, well, it, she we, we had attorneys that we had trying, and they looked at it and they said, there's nothing we can do. You were not legally married. You have no rights to this. So, and it's, uh, it was really sad. I mean, she's, she's okay now. I saw her Saturday past Saturday and she's doing really well but um that's because she has no choice she can either she lost her wife and she lost all of her possessions in her home so and any access she had to her dog so just awful but things like that they still happen they'll continue to happen um some people just don't they just don't get married and then you don't have to get married but you got to put it in a trust you got to legally protect Something yourself like that. Yeah. legally protect yourself in some way shape or form so but in the title world yeah and then also one thing I will say is in reference to title, a lot of times we'll see unmarried woman, unmarried man, or things like that. Just if if the language has changed and it's just put to person, unmarried person, unmarried mm -hmm. person, or Washington person. State is doing that. Um, mm -hmm. I I think we have to request it, but I don't think you're going to find a title company who'll argue with it. They'll no, just not, make the change. Not here, or, but yeah. you'll have to request it because that's not I've never. The I've never had thing. someone, and I have made the request several times. Yeah. Um, and I've never had someone tell me no. Yeah. There's a couple title companies that I haven't done it with, but it I should be a standard uh, yeah. to use persons and they mm -hmm. and, and the, the correct those those pronouns. But mm -hmm. it it you just might have to remind people. Yeah, you know, and we always focus on. I always try and focus on the positive things, like the people so that are supportive, the people that do um, that do come around. Um, but there are still some some companies out there that are very adamant. They don't want our business, and we don't want to give it to them either. So um, I don't really find that in our industry as much. But yes, sir. I, uh, I wasn't here, but I wanted to see the the chart. I didn't get a Which chance one? to read it. <laughs> Which one? Uh, if you go back, yeah, that one. Yeah. So the gray is LGBTQ plus, and the red is heterosexual, cisgender. <laughs> So the higher the profitability and in income, the more likely it's with an LGBTQ plus agent. So, and I do, I mean, if you were to go and speak to people, the luxury, KW luxury, yeah, I wouldn't go hang out with them. There's half of them. I'm like, well, they're in the rainbow network. So there's a lot of people in our community um, that are selling properties at quite a high level. Can I ask you a question right after? Sure. More. Of or two. Um, Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks, Good Mom. Thank you. That was Thank great. Thank you. you. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, my question was Are you networked with anyone in Seattle? I do. I have two agents that I network with in Seattle. Do you know um, uh, Brianna and Jack Schiavone? I don't. I would like to connect you with them. Yeah, I'd love to. I think. Awesome. Yeah, you've already had a connection. Yeah, still. I mean, because they're in the they're in that. I don't know if they're nice. I don't know if they're nice. Are they colored? Yeah, I want to hear how we can get buyers. Just get buyers and you're like, I don't know what the hell you're going to buy. Just just want to pay you. You get a motivation and But if somebody doesn't have motivation or time, they go, hey, you're a network. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that was the, the thing. Yeah, exactly. Hello? Yeah, I don't know where it is. Do you want this? I know. It's like it's got my notes I thought it was like a chair. Little offers on all. Yeah. Do you like what he wants to do? 
Oh, where they are. Hey, if you guys okay. can make a name tag like that, just put um, it in front of you. Okay. Just that. Sure. You can just toss that <laughs> marker back there. Okay. Then you go. That's the problem one. Fair. You still got yours? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you do. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, okay, guys, before yeah. everybody gets comfortable, we're not going to have very many people here today, so I'm going to ask you guys in before, okay? Yeah. Up to the front, to the first four tables or so. Please and thank you. I really appreciate it. If you have some type of condition or some type of preference, some type of condition or some type of preference. Nice to meet you. Nobody saw that? Some type of condition and or preference would make it impossible for you to not sit in the front of the class. Please let me know. Or else. About my water gun. I'm happy to explain. Or else. I know, right? Oh, you're a hot mess. You have no idea. Like, you didn't no, thank Sweet. God. No. Like Corey saw it all. Yeah. So it's How's it going? Good. How are you? All right. We'll just filter them in here. Yeah, I'm going to ask for everybody to just come up front. I know. My favorite. Hey, Brandon, how are you? We're going to be real tight and intimate today. It's going to be awesome. I was looking at you. I'll move up. You're going to move up? She, she sits in her assigned seat. In the third Every row. Every day. Coaching, she You're going to step out of your comfort zone for me? She does. Um, yeah. Marie is also one of our people that's here all the time, but she is at, online today. Okay. So um, we got Brennan, we got Cam. So so like, like, um, your clicker's ready to go, and I'm going to hit record. Um, hey, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, I'm like, I feel like I just kind of moved in. Now, I recognize you, so I just internet work. And that's when we've been able to expand. I think when I joined, it was like 1,500 people. Now it's 1,900. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I get there two days early, we do